بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له النعمة وله الفضل وله الثناء الحسن صلوات الله البر الرحيم والملائكة المقربين على سيدنا محمد أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى جميع إخوانه من النبيين والمرسلين وآل كل وصحب كل ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما يا رب العالمين All praise is due to Allah and may Allah raise the rank of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and protect his nation from that which he fears for them. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to increase our knowledge and benefit us with the knowledge we have acquired. Ameen. Our topic for our lesson tonight is very important. You will hear on many websites, on TV and other stations some of those so-called fortune tellers talking about the events that will take place and unfortunately some Muslims who might seem very worried about their future instead of relying on Allah Azza wa Jal they go to such fortune tellers, they pay them money to tell them about their future as they claim. Let it be known that Imam Muslim narrated that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man ata arrafan fasa'alahu an shay' لم تقبل له صلاة أربعين ليلة وروى الحاكم في المستدرك إمام الحاكم narrated in his book المستدرك as well as البيهقي in his sunan that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said من أتى كاهنا أو عرافا فصدقه بما يقول فَقَدْ كَفَرَ بِمَا أُنزِلَ عَلَى مُحَمَّدٍ In these two sahih hadith, the Prophet sallallahu is warning against approaching the fortune tellers and the soothsayers to ask them about something. Now usually al-kahin is a fortune teller who claims to have the ability to tell about the future. Whereas Al-Arraf is a soothsayer who according to him is specialized in telling about stolen and lost properties. There are two types of fortune tellers, Al-Kahin and Al-Arraf. Al-Kahin, the one who talks about the future, the fortune teller, that's Al-Kahin. Al-Arraf, the one who tells you about stolen and lost items. Some people, when they lose their money, let us say, their money is stolen, they go to these people instead of relying on Allah Azza wa Jal, they go to the so-called Al-Arraf. They ask him, they say to him, we want you to open a book and tell us who stole these goods for instance. Some people who are keen to know about what others expect about their future, they go to the fortune tellers 
who will tell them about things pertaining to their future. It's a major sin, that's the minimum. It's a major sin to approach the kahin or the arraz, the fortune tellers and the soothsayers to ask them about something. The Prophet وسلم, also mentioned that the one who goes to a fortune teller or soothsayer and asks him about something and believes that such a person knows the unforeseen, then he has blasphemed with whatever Allah revealed to his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The case is not the same if a person goes to a fortune teller and asks him about something to tell him about his future while believing in his heart that his words might coincide the truth the reality and might not coincide the truth and reality. Such a person who believes in his heart that this fortune teller or soothsayer, his words, whatever he mentions, could come in accordance to reality and could come in opposite to reality. So it might coincide the truth and might not then in that case he does not blaspheme but it is a major sin to go and ask them about something. Not only that, the Prophet wasallam, to show the ugliness of such a sin and the enormity of such a sin, he mentioned that the one who goes to a Arraf to ask him about something then his prayer will be without rewards for 40 nights. Whether it is obligatory or recommended prayer, for 40 nights it will be without rewards. He's still obligated to pray the obligatory prayers, but his prayers will be without rewards unless he repents to Allah Azza wa Jal, proper repentance, then the reward will resume before that. But the one who does not repent to Allah Azza wa Jal, he goes and asks them about something, then he comes back home for 40 days, his prayers, whether obligatory or optional, will be without rewards. This is just to show the enormity and ugliness of such a sin. To that extent, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned. Even in another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, لَيْسَ مِنَّا مَنْ أَوْ أَوْ Meaning, one will be committing a major sin, if he acts in fortune telling or he goes to a fortune teller to ask him about something and also one will be an enormous sinner if he acts with sorcery or if he goes to a sorcerer to ask him to do sorcery either for himself or for someone else. So the Prophet ﷺ made it very clear that such a sin is an enormous sin. And if one were to believe that such a person knows about the unforeseen al-ghayb, then he blasphemes. Some of those fortune tellers may rely on looking at stars, and they have causes, introductions, and results. 
and they base on them their news. Some might refer to them as astrologists, those who act in astrology, stars, constellations, and the like. And they call them the zodiac in English as well. They, you know, the constellations, they have names for them, for each constellation. And what they do, they say the one who is born between this day and that day, then he is affected by this constellation. And some people, unfortunately, believe them. And even if you were to look at what they say, sometimes they try to mention something in general which is expected. And sometimes they might say to a person regarding your work, you're having difficulty in your work with your peers, with your manager, but don't worry, prove yourself, be strong and uh, stick to your ethics and the like. And the fact is this person doesn't work. He doesn't work. So they have all these general terminologies they use so people can be interested in reading about these things. But those who act in these matters are sinful and those who go to them and ask them are also sinful. Because this is First of all, in contrary to relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Plus, we know that Allah azza wa jal is the only one who knows about the unforeseen. If this person himself can know about the unforeseen, he would have been richer by now. He would have a better life by now. But you look at them, they lie, they cheat and deceive people to take their money. So they don't know about the unforeseen. For themselves, what about for others? Those are liars, those are imposters. So it's a major sin to go and ask them about something. Some people also, they read in the coffee cup. So they sit together and after they drink the coffee, they put it upside down, then they start looking at the traces and they start telling things about this person, such as you have a trouble ahead, you might be taking a trouble, a journey, whatever. Yeah, trouble could be to Wollongong. That's a trouble, Islamically. And could be overseas. They must say you have difficulties in your life. Who doesn't have difficulties in this life? You have problems. There are certain things that are worrying you. These are something in common. I know a friend of mine. He used to work for someone who owned a shop, panel beating shop. He used to work for him. And then this owner was approached by one of those so-called fortune tellers. In Lebanon, that's a business. And in some parts of the world, they make it as a business. So he approached him and he said, I'm worried about you. Uh, let me tell you about your future. Let me read your hand and the like, all these things. Then that person started listening. And then that person, the so-called fortune teller, said to him, the problems you have with your children will be solved soon. All what you need to do is be patient and the like. Then that person burst out and he said to him, you're a big liar. I don't have children. I'm not married. I'm not even married. I don't have children. 
So they try to use general terminologies to deceive people, to make them listen to them. And sometimes they scare them. They tell them, if you don't know what I'm telling you to do, terrible things will happen to you. And some people unfortunately believe them. There are people who are what you call them naive and the like, dull. They can be tempted easily. Even with messages that might be sent through WhatsApp sometimes, they write at the end of it, send it to 20 people, and uh, you will receive five good matters within five days. If you don't do that, then expect three problems. The first one in your health, the second one in your wealth, and the third one. They mention things like this, and some people get scared when they see something like this, and they start circulating all these messages. You have to be smart. You have to be aware of what's going around you. There are certain people who are doing this on purpose. They want the Muslim community to be busy in these matters instead of focusing on other important matters. So they try to deceive them, making them busy with these messages and the like. And some of them, unfortunately, use some terminologies or sentences at the end of the message where they say, if you love Allah and His Messenger, send it to 20 people. And Billah, they say, if you don't do that, that means you don't love Allah and His Messenger. No, I love Allah and His Messenger and I don't want to send it. I want to block the one who is sending this message to me. I love Allah and His Messenger. I'm not obligated to send it. If you say to me, if you don't send it, that means you don't love Allah and His Messenger. That's not true. That's a lie from this person. If he makes me obligated to send it, he's making something obligation in our religion, which is not an obligatory matter by consensus. Do not be fooled by these people who might send such messages to scare people and to make them busy by sending these messages. So be warned against those so-called fortune tellers, whether he is kahin, telling about the future, or he is a arraf, telling about stolen and lost properties. Do not listen to these people. Warn others against going to them. Also be warned against reading in some books that relate to this topic. Unfortunately, there are some available books now, if I were to mention the names of these books, it's not for you to go and look for them and grab them and start reading in them. Do not read in them. Do not come across these books at all. One of them, there is a book. They call it Qur'atul Anbiya. Qur'at is like a draw, when you make a draw. Draw of the prophets, they call it. And there is one, they call it the draw of birds and they call him with these names and there is a book they call it the book of Abi Ma'ashar al-Falaki the astrologist Abu Ma'ashar and also they have in it certain things and there are things against the Islamic belief in this book they talk about the twelve constellations and they believe that everyone is linked to one of these constellations and they might say to the person today the one who is born 
within that period of time, because he's linked to that constellation of stars, his mood will change. He will be frustrated. He will be losing his temper quickly and the like. So they, according to them, they advise him, we advise you to be patient, try not to mix with people a lot this day because you will lose your temper easily and the like. There are other people from those so-called fortune tellers. They go under this category, Al-Kuhan, but they call themselves Ruhaniyin. Ruhaniyin, meaning he has a relationship with souls. And such people claim that they have connection with angels when in fact those people have connection with devils and could be sometimes enormous sinners of the jinn. Because a jinn is a distant creation of Allah Azza wa Jal like human beings. As you find amongst human beings, believers and non-believers, amongst jinn there are believers and non-believers. But most of them are non-believers. And even those who are believers, most of them are enormous sinners. But those who are non-believers amongst the jinn are called devils. So not every jinn is a devil. But every devil is a jinn. So some might have connection with devils and enormous sinners of jinn. And through that connection, they teach them to do certain things in order to help them. But in many cases, those ones or the devils would request of such a person to commit something blasphemous. There was a lady, she was a sorcerer. And she was a well-known witch in Lebanon. Sorcerer. People used to go to her and the magic, the sorcery she does, was very harmful. Some people used to go to her to harm others, unfortunately. They would request of her to do sorcery against certain people. So she would do some sorcery on water and the like, and she would tell them, go and spread the water on their door and the like. That lady, some told us that before she makes any kind of sorcery, she would hold the beads. Instead of praising Allah, she would swear at Allah on each bead. So the devil would have requested of her to swear at Allah for a certain number in order to help her with something. And there was another person who used to have connection with devils and he used to do certain things. Then he became blind. The jinn harmed him and he became blind for a period of time. He lost his sight for a period of time. So dealing with devils, as those ones do, is absolutely forbidden and haram and one needs to know that they will not help him for free they want something in return in most cases they request of him to commit blasphemy some other people who might not be up to this extent having connection with devils, but they are imposters, deceivers. And they deceive people, and they take money from people, and they say, we'll make istikhara for you. 
You know what istikhara is. Istikhara, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us, is something different from what these people do. Istikhara, the Prophet said, let us say you had the opportunity, you applied for a company, they accepted you as a manager and the like, but you're still hesitant, so you pray to rak'ahs, then you make the dua. In the dua, you ask Allah that if this job is good for you, that Allah would facilitate it for you. And if it's not good for you, that Allah would keep you away from it. This is the istikhara. So because you don't know the unforeseen, Allah knows the unforeseen. So that's the istikhara the Prophet والسلام, taught us to do. However, these people would hold the beads and they say, we'll make istikhara for you. What do you want? A lady might go to him and say, and they call him shaykh sometimes. They might grow their bead and they have some fired charcoal in front of them. They make, they put some scents and the like. So they make their own environment and people go to them. She might tell him, so and so proposed to me. I want to know if it's good to marry him or not. Then this imposter would hold the beads and would start saying on each one of them. On one he would say, do it. On the other one he would say, don't do it. Do it, don't do it, do it, don't do it, until he reaches the end. And he might hold it at any section, and he tries to go to the end of it. If he stops on do it, he will say, go do it. This is not istikhara. That's haram. Some people even, used to hold the subha, we call it subha, the bait. And they say, وَلَعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ اللَّهِ مُحَمَّدْ عَلِي أَبُو جَهَل They say, Allah, Muhammad, Ali, Abu Jahl. Allah, Muhammad, Ali, Abu Jahl. So if they stop on either the word Allah or Muhammad or Ali, they say, go do it. So three yes, one no. If they stop at Abu Jahl, they say to you, don't do it. So those ones, you have more chance. 75% yes, 25% no. The other one, do it, don't do it, 50-50. <laughs> All those are imposters. And some of them even, subhanAllah, they use the Qur'an, the Mus'haf. And they say, we'll make istikhara for you. They open the Mus'haf at any page randomly, like this. And they go to the right page, and they count seven lines, and they see. If it talks about paradise, they say do it. If it talks about hellfire, they say don't do it. This is not istikhara. The istikhara is what the Prophet ﷺ taught us, when you pray two rak'ahs, and you make the dua. This kind of so-called istikhara they do is sinful. It goes under the category of al-azlam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Qur'an in the ayah حُرِّمَتْ عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَيْتَةُ وَالدَّمُ وَلَحْمُ الْخِنْزِيرِ up to the saying, وَأَن تَسْتَقُسِمُوا بِالْأَزْلَامِ Al-Azlam, the Arabs during the era of ignorance in Mecca used to believe in what they call them the divine arrows. They would have on one arrow written, Allah ordered me, and on the other one, Allah did not order me, meaning Allah forbade me. So on one of them, Allah ordered me. On the other, Allah forbade me. And the last one, they leave it blank. Then they mix them. Then a person would go to them and say, I want to travel. I want to do this business. At the time of the era of ignorance, yeah, they used to have them around the Kaaba. One would go and he would see someone. Standing there, he would say to him, I want to do this. And they offer a sacrifice to the idols. 
and they used to make this draw for him and to tell him and he used to believe in them if it comes up as God ordered me he would do it if the one that has God forbade me written on it comes up he wouldn't do it and the like and there are many similar things so any of these matters that go under this category are classified as forbidden and haram even the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talked about something called a tiyara a tiyara to feel either optimistic or pessimistic with birds they would carry a bird and throw it in the air it flies to the right so they say this matter is good for me it flies to the left they say this matter is not good for me if it goes straight they repeat it and so on so all these kinds of matters or ways or procedures they do they fall under al-Islam and that is haram ta'ala they even at that time of the era of ignorance they had what they called it like a statue for Prophet Ibrahim and his son Ismail and they showed that they were carrying in their hands these arrows to make people believe that Prophet Ibrahim and his son Ismail used to deal with what they called them the divine arrows as for the one who may recite a verse of the Quran for a good intention for a good intention for a certain number yeah this person might be attended by angels of mercy and they might bless him anyway angels would come to sessions where one is praising Allah Azza wa Jal, reciting Quran and the like and where they have no statues or 3D objects for living things whether a human being or an animal even stuffed toys when they are in the house angels won't go inside the house devils will but angels won't and just to make you understand this matter as well once they put on TV here in this country they made a kind of study about some of these cases an interview with a lady that used to mention that she's possessed I remember like one asked me and to watch this episode and to see what they talk about people being possessed with devil apparently this lady was claiming to have been possessed and they asked her by how many and she said 40 devils and they asked her do you communicate with them and she said yes and they asked her how she said through these teddy bears she had in her bedroom 40 teddy bears she had shelves and 40 teddy bears and she said I communicate with them through these teddy bears the good is whatever is accepted by our religion what our religion considers as good is good and what our religion considers as bad that means it's bad it's not good for you now for certain matters we've been informed about the wisdom behind it but for other matters we might not know the wisdom but we surrender to this religion we do not object we accept because we know it doesn't matter how much knowledge we may acquire in this life we won't be able to know about many many things in this universe so Allah the creator of the universe knows about his creations so when Allah mentions in the religion that such a matter is forbidden we should know that it's not good for us 
When Allah mentions about something that it is an obligation or recommended matter, we should know that this matter is good for us. Some of those who claim to be Ruhani, Ruhani having connection with souls as they claim, because they want people to believe them. So they might claim they have connection with angels, and they might claim that they have angels who are helping them until some people believed that they said this is a sorcerer an imposter a deceiver but this one is ruhani you know how they try to make people believe that there are good wizards and bad wizards so they try to make people believe that there is good magic and bad magic no it's all bad there is no such a thing as good magic and bad magic. It's haram. So regardless, it's forbidden. Regardless. There is no such a thing as good sorcerer and then we have another category, bad sorcerer. It's all bad. So those people, they want people to believe that they are good, but they want to take the money of people. Our Sheikh mentioned to us that once in their region, a person from Yemen came and he started claiming to have connections with angels. And people would bring him to their houses for a sick person. And he would close the doors and windows after Maghrib and they turn off the light and while people are sitting in that place they start hearing voices or feeling movement around them those are the jinn, the devils so they're moving around and they might mention, they say this person is sick with this kind of sickness and his medicine is such and such so he used to do this so people can go to him and give him money and he used to claim that he has such a connection with angels. So people may believe them. In one of his sessions, the devils started talking. People were listening. People started talking and they started saying, we are the angels without a father and a mother because angels are not males nor females they do not reproduce they do not eat or drink or sleep and they are not males nor females but jinn are like humans they have males and females so they get married they have offspring and so on so the devil started talking in that session people were listening and the devil said some people are thinking ill of us. They think that we are jinn. We are not jinn. We are the angels from no father and no mother. So people can believe them. This devil that was talking got busted, as you say, exposed himself. And in that session he said, I order my son Maimun to do such and such. So you have a son. So how can you claim that you are angels with no father and no mother and you say, I order my son Maimun to do such and such. He was exposed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exposed him. And also, there was a person who used to seek knowledge. And heard about this person so he went to his sheikh and asked him this person is doing such and such then the sheikh advised him to go and recite ayat al-kursi so he went and he started reciting ayat al-kursi he was sitting amongst people 
And at that time, they canceled the session. The jinn didn't come. They did not attend. The devils did not attend. If they were angels, they would have attended. But because they were devils, they did not attend that session. And after they dismissed that session, they said to the sorcerer, they said to him, the, the devil said to him, today someone came inside and we were waiting outside, we couldn't get in. Because he was reciting Ayat Al-Kursi. Most of the devils are liars. Most of the devils are liars. That's why one should not go to the so-called fortune tellers and soothsayers to ask them about anything. It was mentioned in the hadith that the jinn may rise up to the clouds. There are angels that will be in the clouds and those angels will be talking about some of the matters that will happen in the following year from what Allah Azza wa Jal informed them about. The unforeseen, the whole unforeseen is only known to Allah Azza wa Jal. There is no prophet or angel who knows about the whole unforeseen, not even a righteous Muslim. However, see how the Prophet Sallallahu told us about the signs of the Day of Judgment and the minor and the major signs about the hereafter, things of the unforeseen that will happen later. This is from what Allah Azza wa Jal revealed to him. But the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Wasalam himself doesn't know about the whole unforeseen. It was mentioned in the hadith that once the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lost his camel, the female camel. And the non-believers started mocking the Prophet. They said to him, you are claiming that you receive revelation from the sky, from heaven. And you don't know where your camel is lost. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I don't know except what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals to me. And you will find it in that place. At that moment, Jibreel came to him and told him that it is in that place. So they went and they found it. The Prophet knows what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed for him to know from the unforeseen. Just a little amount. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa even Jibreel, even other angels, no one, no Prophet, no angel knows about the whole unforeseen. Allah is the only one who knows about the whole unforeseen. Once the Prophet, as you know the story, sent 70 of his best companions, amongst the best companions who were scholars and knowledgeable, he sent them to an area in Najd to teach people the religion. On their way, the non-believers knew about them, surrounded them, and killed them all. The Prophet felt very upset about their deaths. And the Prophet remained making dua against those ones for one month in his prayer. For one month in his prayer, he started making dua against those people who killed 70 amongst his best companions who were very knowledgeable. So had the Prophet known the unforeseen, would he have sent them to be killed? He wouldn't do that. He wouldn't do that. And how many incidents happened to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? It proves that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam doesn't know the unforeseen. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah ordered him to say, وَمَا أَدْرِي مَا يُفْعَلُ بِي وَلَا بِكُمْ 
I don't know what's going to happen to me and you. In attabi'u illa ma yuha ilay. I only follow the revelation that I receive from Allah Azza wa Jal. So the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, despite him being the best of Allah's creations and the most honored by Allah Azza wa Jal, he doesn't know about the whole unforeseen. In Sahih al-Bukhari, it is mentioned that on the day of a judgment, why I'm mentioning this? Because some people, when you tell them that the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam does not know the whole unforeseen, what Allah knows. One will be associating Pana with Allah if he were to say that the knowledge of Allah is equal to the knowledge of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. So the one who says Muhammad knows everything Allah knows, as if he's saying Muhammad has the power as Allah. That's associating partner with Allah. This is blasphemy. When you tell some people about these matters, because there are some who are ignorant, and they want to show, they say, their love to the Prophet, they go beyond the limits. They exaggerate to the extent that they describe the Prophet with these descriptions, some even refuse to say that the Prophet is a human being. They say, no, he is not. Allah said, قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ Say, I'm not but a human being like you, but I receive revelation from Allah, a human being. But some people, they say, no, Muhammad was not a human being. He was light. So they don't believe he had a body from flesh and bones and the like. They believe that he is Noor, all Noor. His body is not like a human being's body. And this is not true. And some they exaggerate. You hear some people saying the Prophet even did not have a shadow. So whenever he used to walk, he had no shadow. That's not true. There's no hadith authenticated to show that the Prophet ﷺ did not have a shadow. He's a human being. He is a human being. But some people exaggerate. But our belief as Muslims about Prophets, they are the best of Allah's creations. As Allah said, وَكُلَّمْ فَضَّلْنَا عَلَى الْعَالَمِينَ Yeah, but we do not raise any of them to the rank of Godhood. Some people claim, those who deal with these matters, that they know about the unforeseen, in a way or another. And they claim, as we mentioned, they want to say Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knows about the whole unforeseen. When you tell him that the Prophet is a human being like us, and he is the one who said that he knows only what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals to him, some even say, yeah, but later, before his death, he did not die before acquiring all the knowledge of Allah. In Sahih al-Bukhari, it is mentioned that on the day of judgment, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, would have the biggest basin, al-hawd, where his nation will drink from it. Every prophet would have hawd, hawd, that basin, and his followers will go to each prophet and they drink from that basin, from that hawd. The biggest one is for Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. At that time, on the day of judgment, some will be coming to his hawd, but the angels will ban them from those whom the Prophet knew during his lifetime. And the Prophet ﷺ would say, why they are getting banned and barred from coming here? They are from my nation. And he will be told, that's in Sahih al-Bukhari, you don't know what they have done after your death. You don't know what they have done after your death. So this removes the 
assumption and the claim that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not die before acquiring the knowledge of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Some who deal with devils and they claim to be what? To have connection with souls. They say we are able to bring the souls of the deceased to you. You know, if it's a soul of a righteous person, it doesn't like to come to this world, as the Prophet said. Even if it were to be given what is equivalent to this whole world times ten. That's it. The souls now are in peace. Enjoyment. What do they need with this world? So they don't like to come to this world. They don't come. The souls of the non-believers are in the hands of the angels of torture. And there is no so-called ruhani, those imposters, who would be able to snatch the soul of this non-believer from between the hands of the angels. They won't be able to do this. Rather, if a person goes to such people and he feels that someone is visiting him, let him know that this could be a devil. There was a young lady, her husband passed away, and she was very upset. Then after a while she went to one of those who claimed to be able to bring the souls of the deceased. So she went to him. The lady is telling the story. Then he brought, and that's not true, the soul of my husband. Then she said, he started visiting me at my home when I am by myself in the shape of my husband. So I didn't feel comfortable about this matter. Then she went to a righteous sheikh. And he told her, be warned, this is a devil. And he wants from you what a husband would request of his wife. So be warned. And he taught her to recite Quran. She struggled for a period of time. Then she was able to get rid of such a person. So be warned against these matters. Warn others, because not everyone is aware of the fact that those imposters are spread around. Some people may go to a person just because he has a long beard. Just because he has a long beard, or that he calls himself Shaykh Ruhani. They use that terminology. Shaykh Ruhani. And they go to him and he takes the money. And sometimes what they do, they rip them and they take their money on different occasions. And every time they visit them, they say, give us, let us say, 1,000, 500 and the like. And they say, it's not for us, it's for them. We want to feed them. Who is them? Whom he is referring to. But the money, in fact, he takes it to his own pocket. Once a person, subhanAllah, who was healthy, came to the office and he mentioned about his story. SubhanAllah, he went to one of those imposters and he told him, give me 500, I'll do something for you. Then you find a good job and the like and the like, as they, the same scenario they do with everyone. So he took the 500 from him. Then after a couple of weeks, he said, give me 1,000. We need to continue what we have started with. And they make them think that if they don't continue with what they have started with, that the devils will harm them. So they can keep paying. They can keep paying. So then this person said, I don't have money to pay you. 
I don't want to continue with this manner. He said to me, you don't want to continue, you will see what's going to happen to you. And this is what happened. This person started feeling in his body something strange. He became possessed. And subhanAllah, he came to the office and he was requesting a recitation, Ruqya Shar'iya. The Ruqya Shar'iya, the Islamic recitation, recite Quran, with the recitation of the Qur'an, insha'Allah, this person will benefit. So once he came and he told about his story and we recited for him, he fell to the ground. And he switched to another person and that was the devil. The devil started talking. As the devil was talking and he was getting hurt from the recitation of the Qur'an, he mentioned the name of that sorcerer, the imposter, started calling him for help. He mentioned his name and he said, help me, help me, because he's the one who put him in his body. So you have to be cautious, where to go. In our religion, everything is clean. And those ones who are claiming to know about the future and the like, know that they are all imposters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned few verses in the Qur'an till he mentioned the ayah that no one knows about the unforeseen except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala said in the Qur'an, and look at the beautiful words of these verses and the admonition that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding the slaves with so they can listen and benefit from all that. And these verses are in sequence in Surah An-Naml. Allah ta'ala said, أَمَّنْ خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ وَأَنزَلَ لَكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَاءً فَأَنبَتْنَا بِهِ فَأَنبَتْنَا بِهِ حَدَائِقَ ذَاتَ بَهْجَةٍ مَا كَانَ لَكُمْ أَن تُنبِتُوا شَجَرَهَا أَإِلَٰهٌ مَّعَ اللَّهِ it means, is he, and that is in reference to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not best who created the heavens and the earth and sent down for you rain from the sky, causing to grow thereby gardens of joyful beauty, which you could not otherwise have grown the trees thereof. Is there a God with Allah? No. But they are the people who ascribe equals to Allah. Then Allah said, أَمَّنْ جَعَلَ الْأَرْضَ قَرَارًا وَجَعَلَ خِلَالَهَا أَنْهَارًا وَجَعَلَ لَهَا رَوَاسِي وَجَعَلَ لَهَا رَوَاسِي وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَ الْبَحْرَيْنِ حَاجِزًا it means, is he not best, who made the earth a stable ground and placed within it rivers and made for it firmly set mountains and placed between the two seas a barrier? Is there a God with Allah? No, but most of them do not know. Then Allah said, أَمَّنْ يُجِيبُ الْمُضْطَرَّ إِذَا دَعَاهُ وَيَكْشِفُ السُّوءَ وَيَجْعَلُكُمْ خُلَفَاءَ الْأَرْضِ أَإِلَاهُمْ مَعَ اللَّهِ قَلِيلًا مَّا تَذَكَّرُونَ It means, is he not best who responds to the desperate one when he calls upon him and alleviates harm? and makes you inheritors of the earth. Is there a God with Allah? Little do you take heed and learn. Then Allah said, 
أَمَّنْ يَهْدِيكُمْ فِي ظُلُمَاتِ الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ وَمَنْ يُرْسِلُ الْرِّيَاحَ بُشْرًا بَيْنَ يَدَيْ رَحْمَتِهِ أَإِلَاهُمْ مَعَ اللَّهِ تعالى الله عما يشركون Is he not best who guides you through the darkness of the land and sea and who sends the winds as good tidings before his mercy? Is there a God with Allah? Exalted is Allah from whatever they associated with him. أَمَّنْ يَبْدَأُ الْخَلْقَ ثُمَّ يُعِيدُهُ وَمَنْ يَرْزُقُكُمْ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ أَإِلَاهُمْ مَعَ اللَّهِ قُلْ هَاتُوا بُرْهَانَكُمْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ It means is he not best who begins creation and then revives it after death and who provides for you from the heaven and earth. Is there a God with Allah? Say, produce your proof if you are truthful. All these verses were mentioned reflecting the power of Allah Azza wa Jal. After all that, Allah mentioned, قُلْ لَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ الْغَيْبَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَمَا يَشْعُرُونَ أَيَّانَ يُبْعَثُونَ Meaning, say, none in the heavens and earth knows the unseen except Allah. And they do not perceive when they will be resurrected. So, be warned against those imposters, so-called fortune tellers and soothsayers. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to increase our knowledge and benefit us with the knowledge we have acquired. I mean, we say La ilaha illallah and make salah on Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.